Hello everybody, my name is Emma Grace and today I am going to be talking about King of Fools by Amanda Foodie. So, um, about a year ago I posted a review, I think it was a spoiler free review for Ace of Shades and if you know my channel at all you know I typically don't do reviews because I feel like I am terrible at them, I feel like I'm horrible, like nothing I say has any value. So I usually re refrain from posting them unless I really, really, really love a book and just have to talk about it with you guys. So I posted a uh, spoiler free review for Ace of Shades and currently King of Fools, the second book, just came out on April 29th and today I'm going to... Er, yeah, April 29th, and I'm going to be doing a review on it. Full spoilers because it's a sequel and I need to talk about what happened in this book. So if you haven't read Ace of Shades, if you haven't heard of the Shadow Game trilogy, let me explain it to you because PSA, everyone needs to read this book. It's amazing, incredible, the writing is amazing, the characters are amazing, the plot is amazing, there's diversity, there's action, there's romance, there's so much and this series has genuinely become one of my favorite series of all time. When I read Ace of Shades, I was like, this like has potential to be on my favorites list, but like I didn't really want to cement it there, I just knew it kind of like was there. King of Fools made this like, ooh, like my fifth favorite series, like just behind the Mortal Instruments. Like I genuinely, genuinely like love this book to the ends of the earth with my whole soul. I love this series. I love Ed and Levi. I love the writing. I think it's incredible. And I just, I love it so much. So please read this book. Not this book, actually. Ace of Shades is the first book. So read both of them though. Anyways, Ace of Shades essentially follows this girl named N who is training to be a lady. She's at finishing school, but she travels to the city of New Reigns, which is essentially known as the City of Sin. It's this coastal city. It's loosely based off of Atlantic City. I thought it was Las Vegas for the longest time. And then today I saw Amanda Foodi tweeted out about how it was based on New Jersey and Atlantic City. And then I looked up pictures of Atlantic City. I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's New Reigns. And it was so cool because I was like, oh my God, it's come to life. But like really it was just her inspiration. Anyways, it's based off of um, Atlantic city. It's called New Reigns. Uh, there's a bunch of casinos and nightclubs and it's really a place N doesn't want to be as she is a lady and she's like trying to be a lady. Um, she wants to make her debut. However, over the summer she does head there because her mother went missing in New Reigns and she travels there to find her with only one lead who is a boy named Levi Glacier who she expects to be like a gentleman because she's trying to be a lady so she wants to find like a gentleman in New Reigns because there aren't that many like finishing school people in New Reigns. Um, but instead she finds out that Levi is this 17 year old crime lord who has this investment scam that is going horribly awry and she offers something that can help him and he offers to help her and together they just go over New Reigns looking for her mother. They find out secrets. They, this, It's just mm, it's so good. There's like this game where the players have to bet their life and it's like it's so amazingly good and I have a whole spoiler free review on this book, um, Ace of Shades, on the first book. So if you haven't read this series and you want to get a little bit more in-depth information, I will link it in the description box below. I was about to go here, but like annotations haven't existed. Is that what they were called? Annotations? Those haven't existed for like years now, so I can't link it up there, but I will link it in the description box below. So please go check that out. All right, so non-spoiler thoughts on King of Fools first. This book was amazing. Um, it was amazingly good. I love it to the ends of the earth, like I said, love it to the moon and back, love it to however many cheesy statements I can make. I love this book. It got to the point where I would read like a hundred pages at a time because I wanted to savor it. I wanted it to last forever, but also like I was getting so nervous for the characters and what was going to happen. I was like, oh my God, I can't read, but oh my God, I have to keep reading. Like so, so, so good. Like I was literally like, I was stressed out about this book because it feels so real, even though it's not, but it feels so real. There's so much more political intrigue in this book and one of my big critiques, or like, not one of my, like my only critique of Ace of Shades was that the political system was, for me, a little bit underdeveloped, but in this book it literally gets expanded to the nth degree. Like there is so, so much expanded upon in this book. You learn so much about the politics, about the parties, about how New Reigns works, about which one they lean towards, about the revolution, about everything, and it's just incredible. I loved learning so much about the world and 
the politics. I feel like in the first book you learn more about their magic, about their split talents and such, but in this book you definitely learn more about their politics and you kind of have like this joint knowledge now of the magic, of the politics, of the atmosphere, and it really just creates such a vibrant, vivid setting that is so enjoyable to read about and it makes it feel all that much more real. I would give it like 11 out of 5 stars though, like 17 out of 5 stars. It was phenomenal. Like, best book I read all year probably will be my favorite book of the year. Nothing can compare. I absolutely just love it so, so much. So please read it. I've literally talked to so many people <laughs> trying to convince them to read it. I got a girl in my English class to read this, or not like read it, I told her about it. And then she was like, oh, I'll add it to my Goodreads. And I was like, thank you. Like, I just... I love it so much and I want to see everybody read this. I think this is genuinely like one of the most underrated series on booktube. I don't think enough people talk about it and I think it's phenomenal and deserves to be talked about. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the spoiler section because this is a sequel. There wasn't much I could say for non-spoilers, but overall I think you got the gist of it. I love this book so, so, so much and I highly recommend it. So if you haven't read the book, then thank you for clicking. Um, please go read it and then come back and we can discuss because trust me, like this is a book you will not want to stop talking about after you've read it. So please go read it and then come back and we can discuss. So yeah, I have to get my notes. I use the term notes incredibly loosely because these are literally just like scribbles. So in this book, we have a lot of talk of destiny and it's always when Levi's about to like make a bad decision. We literally start the first page off with like him talking about destiny and what he thinks of it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like wax philosophical about destiny. Cool. And then he goes and he meets with Harrison. He doesn't meet with him. Harrison kind of comes up to like get in this car. So he makes this deal with Harrison to take down Bianca. Somehow it will make Harrison look better if he knows who the new Mafia Don or Donna of the Torrens will be as Cedric Torn is dead. However, Levi can't do this um, because he's going to be busy doing other stuff for Harrison so he needs to find someone else to go into the Torrens drug dens and pick out who's going to be the new leader or Don or Donna. So Levi doesn't have many friends because his whole gang turned on him and um, a lot of this is about like him rebuilding his gang and stuff. So he gets his one friend, Jack, who is a recovering drug addict to go into drug dens and it made me mad. Levi for the first half of this book really frustrated me. I literally started a list that says things Levi has done that frustrate me. And it goes to like here, like it's, I, like towards the second half of the book, I think he really does develop and expand, but for the first half of the book, oh my god. Levi, stop being so rash, stop being so impulsive, stop talking about your destiny to justify you doing these rash and impulsive things, and please just make good decisions and stop gambling everything away. You know, during Ace of Shades, I don't know if any of you had this feeling, but I definitely, like when Levi won the 10,000 volts, and he like had it and we were there like the whole first book you're reading about him trying to get this money and he had it and then he's like oh like I'm on a winning streak so I'm just gonna keep playing and I'm like no like that's like that was the most frustrating scene in the whole book in the whole world like I think that's one of the times that I felt the most frustrated with a character while reading this book while simultaneously like loving them because I love Levi with like my whole heart and soul anyways not the point, but <laughs> when he gambles away everything, I'm like, oh, uh, 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 okay. And I was so frustrated, couldn't even put it into words. And like, I thought maybe he'd learn from that. Like he'd learn and he'd start like making good choices and stop being so impulsive. But like, that's such a core part of his character. I feel like it's one of his flaws. And I really love that we follow characters with flaws. Like Levi, love the guy, but he's got flaws. N, love her as well, like love her to the moon and like love N. She's so strong and so fierce and we will talk about her very soon. But Levi, like he just makes so many mistakes throughout this book and I'm like cringing and I'm like, okay, this like, mm, okay. So basically he 
I don't want to say sells out, his but throws his best friend under the bus is what he does because his best friend is a Jack and we read from Jack's point of view which is so amazing. I mean I'll get into Jack later. Um, but I loved Jack. I loved him in the first book and then reading this when you discover more about him and how he kind of always has felt like he's kind of a background like side character which like he is a side character in this book but how he kind of wants to get out there and Levi's always been the one who wants to be, make a name for himself and be known and Jack's just kind of always been in his shadow and like by his side. It really, I just, I like really enjoyed reading about that because I feel like it's something a lot of people can relate to, especially me because like I am not one to go out for like my own personal glory. Like, like I am not one to be the center of attention. I always fade into the background as well. So I really related to that and I loved seeing him kind of come out of his shell. Like he didn't really have a shell, but I loved kind of seeing him grow into himself and like become his full potential I guess and really do something for himself and help Levi out and like just oh so good. So Levi and N, let's talk about N first actually. N is amazing. Um, love her as a main character. Uh, just her character development is so beautiful. She's not like I'm gonna completely reject all femininity to become strong because she recognizes that being a woman is being strong and she like it's so feminist and so amazing and so 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 well done to read about N becoming the leader of her gang and still maintaining being a woman like I just know that there's so many different ways to be strong. There's women who will not be as feminine. There's women who will be as feminine. There's people in the middle. I love that she embraces her feminine side and wields it. I loved seeing her kind of come into herself. She kind of really gets into the new reign's mindset and learns how to scheme and she becomes a lot more cunning in this book, which kind of is her downfall with the whole relationship with Levi thing. I love N to the ends of the earth. Oh my god. I need to stop. I need to be stopped. Oh my god. Anne and Levi are like so close to getting together and so close to having a relationship and like it's at the very beginning of the book and I was like this is too good to be true and it was. So they're like I think they're in like a closet. They're like about to kiss and then Jack walks in on them and then later Jack makes Levi. Basically he says okay I will do this for you. I will battle my own personal demons, go into the drug dens, find the new Torin leader, but you have to stop it with N. Like, Bianca's gonna use that against you, you just, like, you can't. And Levi agrees, and you know what, at first I was frustrated because I was like, really? Like, really? Um, but reading the end of the book, I realized how right Jack was and how smart he was, and Reading the end of the book, I was like, they should have listened to Jack. Levi goes to N and he's basically like, we can't, like, Bianca, like, I'm breaking up with you. And I'm like, okay. Then he goes on to, like, make some comments about her being the leader of her gang. And like, ooh, if you want, they don't have to call you Lord, they can call you Lady. And I'm like, excuse me? I love Levi, like I said, love him so much, but like, dude, rein in your ego and don't make comments like that. And she's like, I've had enough of your help. Basically, Bianca wanted them to work together and honestly, I thought King of Fools was going to be like them taking on new reigns together as the leaders of gangs, like they were going to work together, they were going to lead new reigns and be in love and like, it would be amazing to lead new reigns. They were going to like run this run the city, you know, like together, like they would become powerful gang members together, they would work together. But a lot of this book is just them fighting and I was like, it pained me, it really did, but a lot of it, it really did pain me. Um, but I feel like N kind of did need some time away from Levi to build her gang. I love Lola and Grace and I, I believe they're her like seconds and third. Lola's her second, Grace is her third, I love them both. Yeah. Let's go through the list of titled things Levi has done that makes me frustrated. Thrown his best friend under the bus by making him go to a job that requires him to confront his past addiction. Making that decision for him just really wasn't great. Made a sexist comment towards N. We talked about that. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Rejected N. Dot dot dot. 
only to make out with somebody else that same day. Listen, Levi's broken up with N. He can do whatever he wants. But as soon as he walks into that bar and Dice, or we learn his name is Narinder, is like the owner of the catacombs, I'm like, I see where this is going. And sure enough, like two pages later, they're making out and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I, I saw where that was going. Uh, you really gonna do that to end? Like reject her and then just move on like hours later? Like, like Levi, you can do whatever you want and I get it, like times are tough. But please, don't disrespect my girl like that. He dates Narinder for like five months, or not five months, for like a little bit, and then they break up. We'll get into that. Another thing we have, I put this on the list, but like in hindsight, I can kind of see, not giving N or Seance her credit for destroying the Shadow game. Now, I believe there's a scene where like, they're like, oh, you survived the Shadow game. He's like, yeah, I survived the Shadow game. Look at me with my card in my pocket. And I'm like, you wouldn't have survived if it hadn't been for N. I know, I get that he can't really say that because the whole reason she survived and destroyed the game was because she was a miser and she used her miser abilities, which are completely outlawed. She would be executed, so like kind of can see, but like he could give Seance a little bit of credit. He could be like, yeah, but like Seance helped me, but like he's so like self-centered and so focused on his personal glory and he's like, I survived the shadow game. I'm gonna wear silver and put my little card in my pocket and show it off. And like, I kind of think that was part of his way with dealing with it. Like, I think they both kind of have trauma from the shadow game and like almost losing their lives. Um, like, they both kind of have these parts where they start hearing that ticking of the clock because they are really traumatized. And I think N's way of dealing with it is kind of like she has this need for revenge and starting her gang. And Levi's way of dealing it is kind of like showing it off to everyone and being like talking it up and be like, yeah, it's a you. But uh, still a little frustrating to read. He makes this comment about N being in over her head. And I'm like, you're both in over your heads. But N is at least treading water. You're just making dumb decisions. Levi, I love you the most, but you are just, like, you need a wake-up call. Like, you are just gambling everything away. When she comes up, or when Grace comes up with that whole investment thing for the gangs to get them to make money, and they're sitting at the meeting in and Presenza, and none of them are like, oh, like, we're like, that won't work. And then Levi stands up and is like, I have an idea. I'll do this extremely unlikely thing, and then you might invest in it. And I'm like, you just, you just gambled away everything. Like, gamble some more, why don't you? Um, N literally, like, came up with that plan, and he just takes it when it's not his to take, and he gambles it away, and frustration ensued. Like, comes out completely oblivious, too, to the fact that she might be a little mad at him for that. He comes out, he's like, oh, I made the best deal, I'm so great, and she's like, yo, why'd you do that? And he's like, Everyone's ruining my night. So freaking good. I love this book. <laughs> I love Sophia and Jack's storyline. At first I found Sophia a little sus because she was like st staring at Jack. She works in a torn den. I was like, Jack, stay away from her. She's going to be your downfall. And then she confronts him. She's like, I know who you are. I'm a torn and I want to destroy them. And I was like, this is going to be so good. We have Jack who literally hates the Torrens for what they did to him with his addiction and everything. And then we have Sophia who wants to destroy them because they're cruel and they team up together and they try and take down the Torrens. And I loved reading about it. I loved reading about the romance. So much less frustrating than Anne and Levi, let me just say. Like, they're a little slow burn, but like, not to the point where you're like, oh my lord. So in my opinion, besides the ending, my fave, like, the best scene to read in this book was the whole Revolution Bridge and where they blow it up. Freaking fantastic. Like, so good. So well executed. So engaging and just incredible. Oh my lord, why do I sound so, like, stupid right now? Basically, they realize talk can't get to the bridge and Levi's like, oh, I'm driving Lola's car, blah, 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 blah. Um, he talks about his destiny again. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. He's gonna make a stupid decision. Kicks them out of the car. Freaking speeds it into like everything to distract everyone. Destroys Lola's car. And it works, you know, but N has to help him out. And he really talks about, I think, like he gets back to the party. Everyone's celebrating him. 
And he's like, oh, like, maybe I should, like, talk to Anne and, like, you know, forgive her. Not forgive her. Maybe I should, like, thank her. And he's like, gets interrupted. He doesn't forgive her. And, like, yeah, that happens. And she's kind of like, I wish Levi had thanked me or I had gotten some of the credit because, like, I saved his life. I did that for him. But at the same time, she's like, ooh, like, I did that. I'm proud of myself. And I love that, like, she doesn't need that validation from Levi. She just has it within herself. She's so proud of herself for doing that that she just doesn't need, like, the party and the validation and the thank you. Like, so amazing. I love Anne. Levi goes, I believe, to thank Anne when he's interrupted by Narinder, who pulls him aside and is like, yo, that was stupid. <laughs> like... Why would you do that? The render dice, I feel like he's going to play a role in the third book. He's literally there, but he's too inconsequential. Like, he needs to have more of an impact, and I think he's going to in the third book. I just, I think he's going to be in the third book. I remember reading Ace of Shades, and Levi just kind of makes out with him at a bar or, like, at the Sotoil, and I was like, you know, this is like this this isn't a big enough role for him to be there and then he appeared again and i was like okay and then he he's going to play a bigger role in all of this he's so well liked on the south side and the north side i wonder what's up with that i just think there's something about him and i think he's going to come back in the third book that's my prediction anyways that's like the only theory i could coherently make with this book narendra breaks up with levi which like was the wake-up call I was looking for. Like, was Levi even upset by the breakup, honestly? I don't really know, because he goes straight back to N after that, and I'm like, like, Levi, you just need some time by yourself to, like, figure out some things. I love that Levi kind of has this whole complex where he's like, he wants to be a good person, but he also wants to be a good gangster, and he's trying to make those things coexist, but nobody really knows how. I just really love that and I love the conversation he has with Narendra where they're together and he's like, you're a terrible gangster but a good person and Levi's like, can I be both? And Narendra's like, just take the compliment. There's that balance and there's like, I love that reading about his struggle with that. I think it adds so much complexity and dimension to his character and I'm really, I just, I love Levi. <laughs> so Anne and Levi, they get together in this book. Finally, the scene where they're in that bar and Levi's like, everything leads to you, had me in tears, like in tears. So like, it was the moment I'd been waiting for for ages and I was so happy, it was so well done. They're about to kiss and then the police come in or the white boots and they're like, we have a curfew now at 7 p.m. And I'm like, 7 p.m.'s early, but anyways. The gang were starting, they have to run for their lives in the rain, and they kiss, and oh my god, all of my cliche favorites combined, they're running for their lives, they're in the rain, they were about to kiss, but then they didn't kiss, and then they kiss. So, so, so sweet, so cute, they get together. A really, like, unimportant detail that I loved was when Levi, like, they get home and they're like soaking wet or like not home they get to the iron hideout and Levi goes into his room and they like change because they're soaking wet and Levi puts on a sweater and she's like he looked particularly boyish in it and I'm like oh my god he looks boyish no like just I'm picturing for some reason I don't think they have hoodies but I'm picturing him in like a hoodie like a band hoodie <laughs> they're together Levi's about to buy a casino but he doesn't like makes the good decision. He's responsible. He's getting more responsible. Things are good. Levi's getting more responsible and and him are together. And decides to manipulate Bianca into manipulating Levi and well like she kind of bypasses Bianca to manipulate Levi, I guess. She manipulates Levi through Bianca because she wants to get revenge on the Shadow Game uh committee. <laughs> committee sounds like they're like high school club. Finds out the name of like a journalist who's gonna be at the uh, press and she's like I'm gonna convince Bianca to convince Levi to have like a riot or the arts have a life riot. It goes awry because the orphan guild and like they're like turning against them but they don't know that but huge riot breaks out. Uh, Grace stops Anne from killing that dude. Anne kind of settles down. She's like okay maybe I shouldn't. So she goes back to Levi. She tells him everything and he's like you manipulated me and he says something about how he's done a lot of bad things but never to end which really made me think because like yeah he hasn't but like 
Yeah, he hasn't. I just miss those days in Ace of Shades where they were like so innocent together and they were like, ooh, like he's hot. Ooh, she's cute. Ooh, let's help each other. Ooh, let's kind of not do that. Like, you know, I miss that. King of Fools just took that and twisted my heart with it. The scene where Jack is in the bathroom at like a Torin den and he gets handed an envelope from Charles with lullaby and he's so tempted to take it but he doesn't and he goes through the thought process of this would happen this would happen this would happen and he finally takes it and breaks it i thought that was so incredible to read about the fact that you see his thought process and you see him struggling but you see him work through that and manage his addiction i literally like i cried i thought oh my god i love this man so much he works so hard and i just love him so much there's a fight between levi and jack which honestly kind of satisfying like they both have these issues with each other that were like boiling up and then they finally yell at each other and when levi's like are you happy i'm yelling now i'm like kind of like you know um i i also really like that even though levi did send him into this whole situation he always checks jack to see if he's okay like every time he sees jack he's like does he have dark circles under his eyes is he pale is he irritable is he okay and i love that you know he messed up like he really did he shouldn't have like sent his best friend there without asking or like at all but he still kind of I don't know, I just, I love Levi and Jack. Jack has this fight with Charles, and at the end of it, Charles takes a syringe of lullaby. And I was like, no, like, everything Jack has done, he's worked so hard on his addiction and to overcome it, and you're going to just do it against, do it to him against his will? No way. No, I started bawling again. And then Sophia comes, saves the day because we love girl power. The ending of this book is what we're going to talk about next. I'm not ready. It's still so soon. So Bianca finds out that Levi has been working with Harrison. Not a good sitch. She goes to N because she's like, I'm gonna break Levi through you because he already hates me. Like, if it comes from me, he'll kind of expect it and it'll just be like, you know, I'm, like he just hates me already. It's gonna come from you. I forgot with everything going on that she's the Omerta that like makes it impossible for her to not do what Bianca says and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I took a time out and I was kind of like, you know, Levi and Anne will make up though. Like they'll break up, she'll break his heart, but in the next book they'll make up. I have faith in them. They'll do it. So Anne's kind of like has this plan to stay away from Levi at all costs because once she sees him it'll kind of be activated. So she stays away, but Levi finds out Anne's missing and is like, oh my god, I have to find her. Oh my, like I have to. And like he, because he still loves her and they go and he finds her and then it's like the Omerta forced her lips into a smile and I'm like, oh my god, no. I mean, I knew it would come into play obviously, but like not in the way it did. So they're dancing so sweet and she says I love you she doesn't really know if it's at the Ormerta or like her I like to think that it's her this explosion happens because they've been betrayed by I believe the orphan guild and the doves and is separated from Levi she runs away thinking oh yay I'm getting away from Levi I didn't have a chance to break his heart I told him I love you and she runs into Jack and as soon as she did I had like this like oh no like Oh no, she has a gun and she pulls it out and shoots Jack and he dies. <laughs> I sat there bawling and shaking and I couldn't like, <laughs> I want to cry right now, um, but I'm not going to. Uh, like, <laughs> I don't even have words. Like, I loved Jack so much. And he remade up with Levi. He was going to be his second, and they were going to be better than ever. And he fell in love with Sophia. He had a relationship. He was getting his career on the way. And he died at N's hands. That what's, that's, like, what makes it so much worse, too, is that, like, he died in literally the worst way a character, I think, has ever died from a book I read. Like the most painful way i'm still at a loss for words i i don't know what happened i do know what happened but 
I'm really upset about it. I'm gonna be honest with you. For the next like 50 pages, I was in such a state over Jack's death. Like I was crying. I like everything that happened, like so much happened after that that I was like, oh my God. But also I was like, oh my God, Jack's dead. Oh my God. And he has to tell Levi, oh my God, Levi's gonna be broken. Oh my God, Jack's dead. And I, I was just like, there's this game and people are just dropping dead because of Bryce and who has like the black aura, but he's also Bianca's third Ormeta, Omerta. Like what was going on? Why were, what? And tells Levi, Levi's like, oh, but she just told you to break me. Like she didn't tell you to kill Jack. Like that came from you basically is what he says. Like, and he basically asserts that she's lying. And I'm like, I know you're in pain and I know that like, that's probably what you would believe. I don't think that's the case. I think it was really the Omerta. Um, I think Anne really loved Jack as well. Basically we end this with Jonas's execution. And he announces to the world that Anne is a miser and now she's on the run, which honestly is kind of where I could see this book going. I could not really see them staying in like out in the open for much longer um, because of she is a miser and we need to get that into play like I'm so excited to see what she's like as a miser on the run I'm really I'm really interested um, I believe she's on the run with Levi too I think they're run away together but I like how the ace of shades ends with he would be king and this book's called king of fools because Levi is a fool um, in the best way love Levi love you but you're you're kind of foolish in this book just being honest and this book ends with and saying she'd be queen i think so the next book should be titled queen of something i hope so queen of something like queen of nothing never mind we end this book with sophia asking for the keys to the shadow house i believe the house of shadows and I, honestly like in all that happened i forgot sophia was a tauren so yeah she has the house like she has control over that house but i wonder like what is she gonna do there is she gonna start up the shadow game like because she's mad about jack who's dead what's going to happen in the next book i think i covered everything i know this video was insanely long but i genuinely feel like we people who like everyone who's read this book we need something to talk about so like somebody to talk about it so hopefully if you loved this book nobody else you know has read it i could like help you know you like get your opinions out i don't know um because i love watching book talks for that reason because you kind of like it's a book no one else has read but then you go online and you see people talking about it, you're like i agree with you um maybe you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching this video i know it was so long so if you're here thank you from the bottom of my heart it means the world to me that you literally stayed here and watched me ramble on about a book I love so much for like half an hour. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye!